Hi guys, great to be here with you today. I hope you enjoyed our series of One Peter and found it quite interesting. Today I want to start by looking at something new. A while ago I was introduced to the four points. The four points are a company that want to make talking about the Bible and Jesus just easier and more accessible for everyone. You can read about them on their on the website, which I'll put in the description for you. In fact, I'm actually wearing their t-shirt right now with the four points on. Four points just here, as you see. The four points are a great way to summarise the Bible. When it's just four points, it's pretty easy to remember. All you have to do is talk about those four different images. The four points don't just come in t-shirts, though. They have little folding books that you can use and take around with you and even give out. I know I might be starting to sound like I've got a new job working for the four points, but I can assure you that they haven't approached me just yet. For the next couple of weeks, I want us to go through each of the four points and looking at their website, talking about what they, each one of them means. The first one is the heart. This represents the love of God. And if you're a member of the human race, then God loves you. Not just with any old love, but with a love that lasts forever, just like it says in Jeremiah 31, 3, and one that drove God to give his own son, Jesus, to die in your place. And it says in 1 John 3, 16, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. You see, love is not just something God does. It's what he is. He defines the true meaning of love in John in 1 John 4, 16. It simply says God is love. But why would God love us? Why would he love you? Whether you believe it or not, God created you. In Psalm 139, verse 13, it says, For you were created in my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. You are the work of his hands, his own creation, and nothing you or anyone else may do can change that fact or his love for you. In Romans 9, 38 to 39, it says, Neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, neither the present or the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. You may wonder how we how there can be such a loving God when there's so much sadness and evil in the world. The simplest answer to that, without going into too much detail, is that God created us to have free will rather than running the, running the world and running us like robots. Much of the sadness in the world is due to mankind's wrong decisions and selfish actions. Ultimately, the Bible teaches us that evil, sickness and death only entered the world because of the wrong choice. The wrong choice and the disobedience of the first man, Adam. Romans 5.12 says, Sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and in this way death came to all men. The ultimate demonstration and proof of God's love for you is the death of Jesus on the cross over 2,000 years ago. But we'll come to that in a couple of weeks' time.